Our next performer is Angela Scratch, just doing a wonderful uh, recitation to a video that she's done. So um, I'm going to let Angela get behind the mic before I share the screen, and then she will be uh, reciting to her poem, Mungo and Woo. Angela Scratch. Thank you, Mr. Guy Morgan. What a pleasure it is to be here. And it's, it's wonderful to have that activation again within community, don't you think? Guy, thank you. It's always good to uh, share words and wine and poetry goes hand in hand. Uh, and such esteemed company as these three ladies across from me. It's so <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I happened to be at the launch of the Alphabet of Women at Politica in Bondi Bolo last, was it last night? Was it just last night or the night before? Uh, and it was pretty incredible. Uh, wonderful 26 women, not all of them there, I think there were 13 there. Uh, including Marie, um, is in the book, and uh, Deb's had the opening address to the book. So, uh, wonderful to continue with International Women's Day thematic. Great yeah. the bias. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to firstly acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Euro Nation, um, which land we are here at today. <laughs> Um, this uh, was inspired by a kind of like a uh, few days away. Uh, the artists from Tap Gallery, um, Leslie Dimmick, uh, consolidated all of this. Uh, we went together to Mungo, um, and uh, Momo, who some of you might actually know, uh, she's an artist, she's a multi multi writer from Mungo. And she enabled us it, but... time and access to normal. So it's very, very special time for us. And um, it is an ancient place and a magical place. Um, we weren't there for very long, but we felt, each individually felt things in variation of ways. And um, Mine was to write a poem. Um, so this was actually in 2015. Um, the music is by the Central Orchestra. Um, and they were recording, uh, not while I was there, but recording um, in Mungaroo. And this is inspired by the being in this poem. Mungo no joint. The night rolls over itself. Cars drive in patterns of light on windows leaving no trace as if nothing were born. And the wind, I suppose, comes at dark, shifting some of the dust from the surface of things. We follow along the lines of the dream. Poor Mungo Moon, the mother that she is, away from any sand east, we know or imagine it has seen the border of land into pots of people who light it so again. And again, passing through us, the mother that she is. I Some people are interested in racing and song and art, and just like night, haunted by histories that are present here and now. 
I have never had any piece of work that helps me to see people. Mushi Mushi, we have dust on our hands and our pockets and our shoes. We follow along the which way lines of the dreams. Running into song, wandering through nights to the webs, and tonight she goes, the mother that she is. Through these dirt roads of veins, this time, that time, this side of night, song of songs. Running along sand, wide awake to this world of worlds, song of lines, and night knew that I will took me forever from names, shadows, dancing in the illuminations of memory. We follow along the lines of a dream, thereabouts, with the violence of name. Animal life looks at us, we are naked before it observations of old sand wood. Mungo ant, spirit, soul, roots and fur, experiences of life, worlding sources, you or different. We are in ourselves with others together in history. Realize the coming to you for tapping. Connecting impulses and responses to animal, visual, mineral. An agreement of ecologies and the politics between strange and elements of illness across time, walking that gives rise to thought, emotion, into art, working the senses and passion, shaping, forming you, and it reminding us of what we've seen before and after the creation of a changing present. We are in the self with others together in history, realize the coming through meaning fair time. Together a connection between our sites as if it written one to another and a fluency of words inhabiting the duration of this day. We are in our soul with others together in history. Realize becoming through meaning or time along the lines of the dream. The time in between a break in a time, the moment in which something special happens in time of earthly places, brought into circulation of stories of our time and our world, lost souls embedded in leaves. We mediate their portraits. Resurrect the landscape in us. They become us. We become them, desert drawn and search for the common how can we think together? How can we put together? How can we co compose an elastic point that plots movement of time, the future, and the present passing? All accords echo other spaces again and again passing through us. Mother that she is, I see nothing. And with the mess of myself, uh, not to worry, actually, it was, a, it was a video call. So, reading it to you loud and clear tonight for a special performance for Guy Morgan Presents. Um, but yeah, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And I think I've got another opportunity to continue next to the mic with Guy Morgan and his book. What a powerful piece.
fantastic video, <laughs> fantastic soundtrack, which we're just getting the end of now. And um, yeah, two or three minutes for me to set up two mics and two chairs. And then Angela and I are going to do some reading from my book, completely unrehearsed. At least, at least Angela's unrehearsed. <laughs> I wrote the book, so you know, I had a bit, I had a bit of a heads up. Uh, anyway, um, uh, please top your glasses up, uh, have a relax for five minutes or so, and then we'll uh, do a double lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge crowd that obviously nobody can see on the television because. <laughs> There's only two people here, actually. <laughs> um, here goes nothing. Now, this is a section or a couple of sections out of a book that I wrote. Um, it was published last year. Um, I've been extremely mean to Angela because Angela has read the book, but she didn't know which passage we were going to do with the um, preparing of. Now, what's it called? It's called The Empire Sells Out, is the book. It is available. I have got copies if anybody wants to. They're so impressed with this that they might want to buy a copy, $28.50. Um, and I'll inscribe it for you. Um, this is uh, a piece that was originally conceived as being two male parts, but I thought it would be nice to twist the genders a bit. Uh, this is a conversation between narrator and the emperor. And I'll give you two guesses who's the emperor. <laughs> But um, we'll go from now, Angela. Um, shall we have a little countdown? Can we have a little applause before we begin, folks? Uh, a little bit of Foley audience interaction. Can we have some clapping? Yeah. Okay. Let's discuss visual art, said narrator. I'm no good at conversation, the Emperor replied before continuing, but I know what I like. How do you know? I just do, never needed to think about it, and have always appreciated aesthetics from an early age, probably before I was even created. If I didn't have to be the Emperor, I'd be a painter. Can you be both? asked the narrator, knowing what the answer would be. Can't be both. One is a vocation, the other is a responsibility. I like that. When do you start to realise that being the emperor doesn't require any natural ability? Uh, take it from someone who knows. Leadership is a role rather than a skill. It can be practised by anyone. Trouble is, you are not just anyone. The wise and famous artist once told the emperor that painting is one third the subject, one third is the artist, but by far the biggest third is the art itself. The emperor liked that. Art can't be a democracy. It doesn't compute because it's not supposed to. That's why the emperor both loves art and realises it drives him to distraction too. It's one and the same. Both different. It all adds up. But when you add it up, it doesn't. Can't live without it, though. At least one, at least on this last point, they both agreed. Who is your favourite artist? What a ridiculous question. That's like asking me which is my favourite sunset. It's also like inquiring if I prefer women artists to men artists. Ooh. I like artists. To the emperor, sex made no difference. He knew it was pointless to exclude one section or specific group and to consider what were utterly extraneous factors rather than simply focusing on the work itself. Continuing this thread, the emperor added, ideas art, ideas driven art had always driven him to distraction, going over his head completely. Social politics and the gambit of the conceptual ideas. I leave any socio-political beliefs out of my appreciation of art completely. I have enough political shit in my day-to-day -day existence. I find an intellectual claptrap. I'm not a curator or a critic or an arts administrator. They have their roles and their axe to grind, their road to home. But what happened to the enjoyment of pure aesthetics? The idea of hanging something on the wall in your palace just because you like to walk past it regularly 
and appreciate it every time you do. Oh, I didn't realize you could be so naive. Thought narrator. Fibbing to herself and sharing the thought with whoever was present. Is it ignorance, whitewashing, or for that matter, blackwashing that's trying to compensate or worse still, overcompensate for various injustices of the past? Without the right attitude and a policy of real inclusion, there's an absolute danger of repeating past errors. And that's more of a behavioral indictment because today we should be standing in a position of enlightenment and knowledge. Next thing is sentimentalist we were able to accuse me of being a white Anglo-Saxon male. <laughs> Even though I'm fairly sure I'm not, it wouldn't be my fault in the slightest if I were. Surely narrator can't blame me for being created as I am when I had no responsibility for my birth. She can't accuse me of having accountability for inequalities and wrongs of the past, in which I had no hand, sure. Narrator was professional at reading thoughts. It went with her job description, and her published stinging judgments were usually bang on. I know what you're thinking, said Narrator. And yes, I bloody well can blame you. What makes you so immune from gender issues and social injustices, past and present? My job title, perhaps. Uh... <laughs> can I ask you a question? Uh, don't you mean, can't you ask me two questions? No. Well, you've already asked me one. Oh, I see. Okay, then. Little so-and-so thought the radar. The Emperor grinned. It was one of his favorite requests. He was continually surprised that so many people asked the completely unnecessary first non-question. <gasps> Here's the second. How long have you felt this way? What way? That you were an outsider. I hate that sort of question. How long this? How long that? How long did it take you to write that book? How long did it take you to paint that picture? It's irrelevant how long it took, and it shouldn't matter. Just look at the end result and assess that. Sorry to upset you. I'm not upset. I'm just losing patience. My preferred answer to that type of question is, how long have I been able to think? I'm saying, look at the results of that knowledge, not how long the outcomes took. It's like asking me how long it takes to boil a perfect egg. The answer is the same. No, it's not four or five minutes, it's years, even decades. Now I know what you mean. That's something I still get wrong as often as I get it right. And you don't know the outcome until you've cut it open. And by then it's too late to do anything about it. No, narrator. No, 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 this is what I mean. It's the gaining of experience that's important. It's non-transferable because it's self-contained. You can't teach a person experience. You can only help them acquire knowledge. The rest is what they pick up and do with what they've learned. A perfect boil egg can take more than 50 years. Some never learn it. It's like being able to pick the perfect avocado. Now, now I know what you mean. I really know what you mean. I really do. Bang on. Now you see my point. Some stuff happens, and no matter how much you know, or what you've achieved, or what position you're in, you are simply guessing the outcome. That's why asking how long it took is irrelevant. It's almost as bad as asking the first long question in the first place. I promise not to do it again. Well, to actually answer your question, the second one, not the first, I felt this way as long as I can remember. With that, the emperor took his leave. Oh. Oh. One more little uh, section. This one only goes for, for a, a page, but hopefully there will be some areas that a lot of people agree on. It's getting some stuff off my chest here, but of course it's not my chest, it's the emperor's chest. 
The emperor considered bringing in laws to outlaw antisocial behavior. But since he didn't have any friends, not the human ones anyway, he had no real understanding of the issues. Social media, more like anti-social media, if you ask me. You meet online, do new friends the favor they requested, then they cease responding or unfriend you. Not a lot of gratitude there. Get a life book. These people are similar to those who choose to be unpleasant to make an unnecessary point when they could just as easily be nice. From some reasons, they get untold, which it were, pleasure in being disagreeable and even going out of their way to do so. Inflicting yourself on others should be outlawed. First offence would warrant public airing on the community notice board. Second, in subsequent occasions, the offender's stocks would be further reduced, preferably by spending some time in them in the town square. Another of the soft, observed, needless stupidity hates is ignorant. Uncaring drivers overtaking on the inside of the highway. He referred to the practice as undertaking because it was a shortcut for a fast trip to the undertaker, albeit in what's supposed to be the slow lane. Either way, the person in front never saw it coming until they collected their one-way ticket to the local cemetery, which is often referred to as the dead center of the town. It's amazing what blind spots contain. They are packed full of unexpected unseens lying in wait. W-E-I-G-H-T. Keep less and less overtaking, you dumb nut. All right, if you happen to be in those countries with steering wheels on the net. What's so hard to understand about that? Oh, speed limit, road rules, and common sense apply to you. Don't apply to you? Wrong again. Sorry, the first two do, third doesn't. And don't get the emperor started on a necessarily nosy motorbike cyclist with attitude. Uh, sorry, needless thought duplication in body hunting material, more superfluity, and food delivery drivers on two wheels. They should have their own lane named fast, or sorry, fast track to hell lane. Collectively, they are an arsehole without buttons. Have a good look at yourself, you individual one-eyed orifice. Don't hold back, Emperor. Tell us what you really think. The Emperor always felt better having invented. Sometimes he didn't feel like holding back. Yeah. Thank you so much, Angela. And to throw that on you on rehearsals, a uh, uh, real credit to your skills. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank um, you, the Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can call me Emperor. <laughs>